Great, uh, great to be here. So uh, I'll begin my story. So what I'll do is I'll give you a short story arc of uh, where I started and uh, where I'm right now. Uh, then we'll go deeper into the story, right? Uh, so I was born in a small town called Muzaffarpur in Bihar. And uh, it was a typical lower middle class family. Uh, when my father got married to my mother, uh, he used to go uh, to his office on a bicycle, which a fact which was not uh, too well appreciated by my uh, Nani Hal side, basically the uh, Nana. And uh, so that was this whole uh, the setup. Uh, I mean, my mother was of this opinion that if I uh, crack a bank job, if I start working in a bank, which has a stable job, uh, my kid has done enough. And uh, that's the extent of, was of extent of her ambition, basically. And uh, there was an incident that happened, uh, which, which basically, uh, as a kid, I didn't know, uh, I mean, uh, how, what was the magnitude or gravity of that. So uh, once, uh, and, and typical uh, Bihari family uh, traits of basically punching above their weight to send their kid to the topmost educational places, uh, taking loans to basically fund the kid's education, that happened with me as well. And, uh, and they, they, of course, because of the peer group I was involved in, I never thought that I was not of that uh, economic standard of my peers, basically. So once what happened was that uh, uh, at my house, uh, one of the legs of the bed broke. And this bed was something my father had gotten in dowry, by the way. <laughs> So uh, imagine, uh, that was the time, it was 80s, right? I mean, uh, all, all said and done. And uh, they didn't have the money to get it repaired. So what uh, they did was they, they put bricks, a stack of bricks to support the bed. And uh, a, a, a guest came to our house. And we, for us kids, uh, for us it was normal. It was fine. I mean, it didn't stick out. Now, if suppose in your house, if suppose you see a, a cement coming out of the wall, it's, it's, a, it's a crisis. I mean, you'll go and fix it as soon as possible. But for us, at that point of time, it didn't stick out. I said, okay, fine. And I mean, it's a, it's a natural and logical thing to do to support it with bricks. How can you buy a new bed? And uh, a guest came to our house and he, he pointed it out and told me that Abhishek uh, should go for a diploma. Why are you, I mean, aspiring for an engineering? And his, his viewpoint basically came out of that observance. And I didn't get it why he was telling me to not aspire higher. And uh, you were like, get into a job as early as possible and support your family. And from that moment onwards, uh, today, uh, uh, I built two companies. Uh, one of them is valued at uh, 125 crores and another startup basically, which does annually eight crores in revenue. And so this was the story arc. And now we'll go deep into the story. The, the topic suggests is the journey of an introvert. And uh, I was always an introverted shy kid. And as all shy introverted kids, uh, my ambition was not to come in front of you and talk like this, right? It was always like sitting at the back, maybe coding something and doing all those back-end jobs. And uh, you would know, of course, your students, uh, once you grow, uh, I mean, older, you would know that the front-end jobs are the jobs which pay the most, right? And uh, so I didn't know that. I might, that was my extent of my ambition. So... Uh, one more thing that happens is that when you are an introvert, right, you see other people go on stage and speak. And then you compensate for it by saying that, okay, the person who is speaking there, I also have the substance, just not the ability to go and express myself. So, uh, so I'm fine. But, but, uh, but what happens is these orators, these people who can sell themselves well, those who can articulate their thoughts well, eventually uh, do much better in life. So it, it's a constant struggle for an introvert person to be there, to reach there. And uh, it will happen. I mean, once you uh, get jobs, you'll have to present to a, I mean, larger audience, to your bosses. And if suppose you're not articulate enough, you'll have all the substance, you'll have all the data. But but sometimes uh, you'll, you'll be nervous as well. And uh, you might not do your 100%. So uh, there's, a, there's a solution to this. There's a cure. That, that's what I also did in my life. There's a thing called the confidence differential. So what happens is if suppose once you are introvert, you don't want to be on a stage. And uh, so you, you work hard, you attain knowledge and reach a level where, where basically you can at least confidently talk about your own area of expertise. And when you're talking to an audience, basically, which you think uh, you are more in experience, uh, I mean, in front of them, and you have a differential of knowledge and experience, then you'll be more fluent and more confident in, in speaking. And this is the way to do it is basically 
gain confidence by accumulating knowledge and experience and eventually what will happen is you will do it and uh, it, all that stage fright all that nervousness will go away and and you will be a more confident person but that will take uh, uh, years and that will take a lot of experience a lot of knowledge but you'll you'll be there you'll do it i i also could overcome that and talk to you in front of the, the audience like this because of that confidence differential so i and then what happened was coming back to my journey i uh, uh, like every other uh, middle class person uh, the way to prosperity is in those days was of course doing medical or, or engineering so i became an engineer though i was good at arts i could sketch i could write poetry but uh, that was something if i told someone that i write poetry they laugh it off so i became an engineer i uh, i was working in south korea for a big multinational electronics company you would know the name of and uh, it was a good life uh, earning was good uh, uh, i was doing much better than what my mother thought of becoming a bank po so it was better than the bank po role so uh, i thought this is it and this is uh, i have reached somewhere and uh, but then of course uh, in life what will happen is that uh, life is like a, a skyscraper right and every achievement will give you the key to the next floor and when you go to the next floor you will you think that you have achieved something in the lift you will be alone but when you reach the room you will see hundreds of people like you there and then again the the peer pressure will be there that, okay everybody is, has achieved that what can i do more then you will work harder and then you go to the next floor so the point is that life is all about that i mean it's all about where uh, you will have whenever you unlock a next level you will find a lot of people like you and and then again the peer pressure will come in so same thing happened with me as well i thought uh, this is not it uh, people in i mean who are around me are are also aspiring for bigger things and uh, during that time one other accident happened i would say was happy accident uh, i was sitting in my room uh, in bangalore btm layout i was working in uh, uh, that same company and uh, an idea struck that i should write a blog about gabbar singh and the twitter was new that time the concept of following people was a joke that okay so i what i did was i'll write a blog about this so what i did was i created accounts like basanti kalya gabbar singh and all that and i thought that the silly joke was that all these uh, the robbers or dakaits are actually following basanti on twitter so that was a joke that was one of the silliest jokes ever and uh, i did that i i created gabbar singh as well i deleted uh, those other accounts but when i came to delete gabbar singh as well i saw some 20 retweets and inflation adjusted to this date it would be 1000 retweets now i guess so <laughs> so uh, i thought there there is some potential and uh, so i started doing it and uh, twitter that time was a serious medium you had like journalists or head of states talking to each other and stuff so uh, it was a i mean something different a parody account and uh, what i did was uh, then next day uh, my pg mate came running to me and told me that you should follow this guy called gabbar singh on twitter <laughs> i said yeah for sure i'll do that and uh, that's when i realized there is that that something uh, i think so this is something which i talk about i mean you can read it i guess tweeting about changing the nation is like a construction worker working from home so uh, it should always be grounded i mean you are not changing the changing the world uh, the, the people i respect are people who are out there doing actions and not mere words so uh, yeah and so this happened in 2012 so what happened was i was Uh, for my internship as was in bombay and uh, people started calling me and they said that you are on a page or somewhere i said what page is this so then they basically they just sent me this screenshot of this and this was in 2012 i guess today we are sitting in 2023 so i guess uh, uh, that there was the high point of my twitter career i guess <laughs> being on the cover page of a magazine uh, but but i realized uh, that uh, all this content creation all this online persona uh, we need to do you need to do uh, real things in life as well so uh, that's the thing so basically i thought a typical middle class thing uh, this was in 2010 when i started this account i started monetizing it as well but i could never quit my job because i thought who quits their job for for a twitter account uh, <laughs> so uh, and and i had a fortunately i had a, i had a good career as well i was uh, 
working in the multinational after my MBA and uh, doing good. Uh, everything was going fine. The important bit happened later. So uh, I wasn't left uh, with my top boss in my company. I was, uh, I don't want to name the brand, but it was a condom brand, top Indian condom brand, not Indian, international condom brand. I was leading in India and uh, uh, it was a good, uh, we used to create great creative ads and I was leading the team as well. And uh, he asked me this question, what are you doing here? I thought this could be a, a short term question, maybe what are you doing in a lift or what are you doing? Why are you not in a meeting? I check my calendar to, if I'm missing a meeting or something. I was not missing a meeting. Then I, when I came out of the lift, I realized what he meant was, what am I doing in a job? Because what, what has happened is, well, I had built a network and uh, by that time, I, I guess I had already had reached like 1 million following on Twitter. So uh, I realized that what he was telling me was that you have built, built a network, you have that leverage, why don't you convert it to a business? And that's when uh, I decided, it was the peak of my career then, I decided to uh, quit. It was a very difficult call, uh, typical middle class trades, always risk covers, uh, always not quitting the previous job without the offer letter in hand, right? I have never seen, I mean, it's it's like uh, nobody can think of that uh, situation where you don't have an offer letter in hand and you have quit your job. There should be always be continuity. Uh, you you can never take a break in life. That's what we are as Indians. And uh, you you see foreigners going on a six month break, but that rarely happens in India. So I thought uh, then I should, if I'm quitting the job, I should have some clients with me already. Uh, but that was not the case. And uh, I had to quit. And then think I, I thought that if suppose I am not quitting and I'm always in this soft embrace of my job. I'll never work hard or I will never take it seriously. It will always remain a part-time endeavor. So uh, then I started Ginger Monkey, which is my uh, ad agency, you can call it. It's a creative agency. Uh, my, my employer was my first client. So basically, they told me that, okay, if you're going out, why don't you do the same work you're doing here? And uh, then we built, there was a first client. Now we are sitting at 80 plus clients working in four continents and uh, we have a big enough team to manage everything so that I can be here and, and share my thoughts. Then that, that was uh, going fine. Everything was going fine. I was like, Tika, it's, it's a services business. It has its own pace of growth, uh, but I want to do a product as well. That's when uh, I got a call from my friend on 1st of August 2021, I guess, 2020. 2020. He called me up and said that, okay, Abhishek, you have enough experience in, in on social media. Uh, why don't we start uh, an app, basically, which is anonymous social media. You have done this enough number of years. You have enough experience as well. You can put that learning into this. Uh, we, we put together a deck. I, and I had underestimated the network by that time. And then I started approaching people. And fortunately, whoever we approached uh, were very gracious. And in the end, uh, we got funded by 21 unicorn founders. And the best part was that I had never asked them for any help ever. Uh, they somehow knew about this handle and they found that, okay, if this guy is doing something, he can, he can, he can actually make it uh, bigger basically. So uh, within a call, all of these guys came in and pitched in money. We, we raised the number that uh, was mentioned and, uh, then what happened was, uh, uh, I remember, uh, just to give an example, uh, I had never pitched to investors before. And I was always an introvert kid. As I told you, there was a confidence differential. It was not working in my favor this time. Because, of course, investors are people who are uh, who have done enough in their lives, uh, have themselves been entrepreneurs, achieved great heights, and now have become VCs. So I said, how can I pitch to these guys where I, I don't have that differential? So uh, this would be an adventure. Why not do it? And I became that confident, fake confident brat in front of the investors. I remember there was a, a international VC. I was having khichdi while, while the talk was going on. And he was like, oh, we might be disturbing you uh, while you are having a dinner. I said, no, no, don't worry. I, I just talk like this only. So this was the extent of fake confidence I had. 
uh, while being that introvert shy kid. So uh, Shark Tank was also, a, it also happened like by chance, we got a mail from setindia.com and it was like written in comic sans with colorful font and everything that <laughs> you made it to this first level, first round of this. So I told my founder, Pakka, this is fake. Just check the spelling once. <laughs> Because I, I don't recall applying for it even. I think my founder had uh, filled a form or something. And then I they said, no, no, this is real. I said, okay. And then they called us for an audition uh, in Dwarka in Delhi. We went there. And again, uh, when I entered, uh, the moment I entered, the, the people that were sitting there said, welcome, Gabbar Singh. I said, wow, this is nice. <laughs> um, so that time, uh, again, I was nervous. Because again, there was a confidence differential. These guys are Shark Tank owners and stuff. Uh, but we did well, we got selected, we went to the Shark Tank, uh, we were called there for five days. Uh, the How it works usually is that three days you, they'll make you rehearse and on the fourth day they'll, the shooting will happen. Uh, we did all those rehearsals, they made us work really hard actually. Uh, and uh, fortunately that happened, we also managed to raise funding as well. Uh, and two of the sharks were gracious enough to fund. Plus. Uh, uh, the media value of of that whole uh, uh, I mean show is five crores for you. I mean I would save five crores in my marketing budget uh, just be by being on that show. So for me it was for investors it was good for me. I'm not uh, wasting my investor money to put in marketing because I, I was compensated by that episode. So uh, it was great. Uh, I mean uh, life is still going on. I'm I mean you can see. I'm still young, <laughs> so uh, there, there's there's more uh, uh, pointers to be written on this <laughs> screen, I guess. So this happened, and uh, I'll I'll leave you with this message basically. I mean, uh, keep yourself grounded always. Why? No matter how much you achieve in life, someday a guy will wrap samosas with your obituary. Thank you.